So in Revelation 17 and 1, uh, first of all, we're going to note that it's going to hit right away in this verse. It's going to hit to some pretty strong language, language that we're not accompanied to typically the hearing uh, that we may not even expect necessarily to be in Scripture. Although uh, the Bible sometimes gets pretty plain, yeah, it does. And if you and if there and if there is a censoring Dr. Seuss, did you hear the latest on that? They, they don't they don't even like Dr. Seuss anymore. If they can get Dr. Seuss taken off the shelf, how long do you think it is before they try to get this book taken off the shelf? As soon as they call it. Completely, completely incorrect, but I don't want to guess. I don't want to get bogged down too much on that. But I want to look at Revelation 17 and 1, letting you know right away that it's going to uh, say some strong things. But here it is, verse number one. The Bible said, "And there came uh, one uh, of the seven angels." So now you know you know the story. John is writing this revelation. God is showing him a revelation uh, of what is going to be in his day. It is also a revelation is how God is going to wrap up this world because it had a beginning, and this world will have also an end. But the kingdom of God will never end. But this world is dying, folks. I, I don't care what kind of climate change things they put in place or how many cars they want to get off the roads. They want to get their car, our cars off, cars off the roads while they fly around in big jets. But that's neither here nor there. I try not to focus too much on that. But regardless of what they do with climate change, I'm telling you, this world is not getting better. It's getting worse. It's dying. And one day, God is going to wrap up the entire thing. And he's going to set up a kingdom which shall never die and we shall never end. So my hope is not in this world. That is not to say that I'm a polluter of the world. I try not to be a pollute the world. I try to take care of the world because God has made me an inhabitant of such a beautiful world. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, I'm not here to save the earth. I'm here to preach the gospel and see how many people we can get saved for the glory of God. Right? Amen. So Revelation 17 1, uh, some apocalyptic language, some strong language. The Bible said, and there came one of the seven angels. John is writing and he says he sees this revelation of how God is going to write, wrap up the last days and how God is going to bring judgment to the world. And he said one of the angels which had the seven vials. So it was, watch what the angel does. And talked with me. So the angel came to John uh, and John notes that the angel previously had one of the seven vials. You all see that in verse number one? Uh, so the angel had uh, previously had one of the seven vials and now this angel comes to John and is talking to him. So the Re Revelation 17 then is a, is drawing on the uh, the previous chapter where the vials are discussed. Is everybody sort of following me? Uh, so in this in this apocalyptic literature, in this ap apocalyptic language, uh, God is going to wrap up things in the world through a series of judgments that come against a wicked world that has rejected Him and taken Dr. Seuss off the shelf and kicked the Bible out and kicked Jesus out and prayer out and the Ten Commandments out. After the world has gone after the Antichrist and after the Antichrist system, God will bring judgment to the world and He's going to do it through a series of judgments. And but one of these judgments are these vials, and that is talking talked about in Revelation 16, uh, where these angels have these vials and these vials are bowls. They contain the wrath of God, and each angel is going to pour out His judgment upon the earth. You see that in Revelation 16, and then heading into Revelation 17, we know that Revelation 17 is a continuation of Revelation 16 because, to, to, to some degree, because John draws on the fact that he sees one of the angels that previously had one of the vials. Is everybody with me? Yeah. So, if Revelation 16 is filled with the judgments of God, and it is, you see in Revelation 16, let's take a look here really quickly. Uh, I probably won't read any verses, but the first vial is found in verse number 2, uh, and so come upon men. The second vial is found in verse number 3. The sea is turned into blood. The third vial is found in uh, verse number 4 and 5. The rivers are turned into blood. And you can read Revelation 16 when you get home. I don't want to draw too much attention to it, although it's, it's a good chapter so you should read it. But what I am saying is Revelation 16 is filled with these angels dumping out these vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. Uh, and now Revelation 17 picks up in that same language. Okay?
Amen. Everybody with me? Yeah. Verse number one. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, or come here is the way we would say that in modern vernacular. He says, I will show unto thee the judgment. So again, Revelation 16 filled with judgment. Angels pouring out vials upon the earth. Now Revelation 17 is filled with judgment. But I want you to know this. God is not judging his people. God is judging the wicked wicked world that has rejected him. Amen. Amen. So oh, wait, when, when, when we find specifically who the judgment is pronounced on in Revelation 17, we're going to find out that the judgment is upon the church. The judgment is upon the people of God. The judgment is upon, let's look, Revelation 17 and 1. Are you there? And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, or come here, and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Amen. Now, this is some tough language. I mean, we don't typically use language like that. I mean, we shouldn't probably sit around and call people names like that. But now, God is the one saying this. The angel is the one saying this. The angel has taken order from God, and, 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 and the order from God is that God God has looked at something and he has pronounced it as wicked and idolatrous and adulterous yeah. and full of fornication and therefore he sums up his judgment of her, this woman as the great uh, harlot, the great whore. Are you right, right. So I'm not going to say that word all that much. I'm going to try to steer from it but I just want you to know that God uses some pretty strong language to describe her, doesn't he? Yeah. So his judgment has already come in, verse, in Revelation 6 16, as well as previously in Revelation. And now we see his judgment zeroing in on this woman who he calls the great harlot, the great whore. A strong language, but God has pronounced judgment upon her. Now watch what it says of the great harlot. The Bible said, verse number one, she sinneth, verse number one, upon many waters, many waters. Now, I would say to you this, this book is not easy to teach. Amen. Uh, this book is kind of, by, by this book, I don't mean the Bible, I mean the book of Revelation. It is filled with all of this language and all of this imagery and all yeah. of these things and these angels talking with me in vials and seas turning to blood and yeah. uh, great harlots. And uh, this is a lot of imagery here, but because it's not easy to always understand and because it's not always easy to teach, sometimes we shy away from it. But tonight I wanted to dive in into it, okay? Yeah, yeah. Probably if there's any one thing I've ever heard you folks say uh, to me is that you would like to know more about the book of Revelation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, but it's the one book that I shy away from sometimes because sometimes I struggle to understand it myself. Right. But, nevertheless, the Bible says here that John is told by the angel that God is going to bring judgment against this, this, this uh, figure whom God calls this great harlot but watch what it says, that she sitteth upon many waters, many, many waters. In other words, she has representation on many shores, on many seas. She has, in other words, been around a time or two. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is what God says of her. She said it on many waters. In, yeah. a, in other words, she's not just uh, uh, hanging out with one person. She's hanging out with all kinds of different people. She's yeah. in many play, many waters would kind of represent the shores or the sands of the sea as the waters rush up onto the shore. It's representing a geographical area, I think is what we're going to find out here soon. And the Bible says here that she said upon many waters. All right? Now, that said, let's look at verse number two. Watch what happens in verse number two. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Let me ask you this. Well, maybe I shouldn't ask you that way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I was almost going to ask you a question. That would have helped us understand, but may have been a little bit on the inappropriate side. But verse number two. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Fornication. So John says that the angel said that this great harlot, the kings of the earth, have been in league with her. They have been uh, entangled with her. I hope you can understand what's going on here. They have been allured by her. Her. They have been in a relationship with her. Right. They are guilty of fornicating with her. 
That's right. And then she would be then guilty of fornicating with them. What does fornication mean? It just simply means some sort of sexual impurity. Now, remember this. The Revelation is apocalyptic literature. So I don't think what we're seeing is a physical woman doing something with a physical king. I think what we're seeing is something more spiritual, something more apocalyptic, something more something that is filled with imagery that we kind of have to break down and see what's going on. Right. So, well, but this I do know. The woman sits on any water. She's 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 uh, got influence across the world. I mean, she doesn't just have influence in America, but she has influence in Mexico. Yes, sir. Right. Why? Because the king of America has fornicated with her, and the king of Mexico has fornicated with her. Everybody kind of understand it. Exactly. Now, I didn't write this book, so we're just going to have to take it for what it is. Exactly. So it sounds kind of graphic, but it is what it is. God put it in the book. And this woman is committing spiritual fornication with the kings of America, the king of Mexico, the king of China, the king yeah. of Iraq, the king of Iran, the yeah. king. And this woman now, because she's all over the place, she has influence yeah. with our many waters. She has influence yeah. all over the world. Yeah. Because let me tell you this, there is a strong uh, man you know what this is I gotta be careful here but I'm gonna just say this to you uh, when, when well maybe I'll just skip it <laughs> uh, with, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication they have uh, been in league with her and watch what it says so now as the nation goes and remember a king would then would be representative of a king dumb yeah. Now, America is not a kingdom, and contrary to popular opinion, we do not have a king. Right, that's right. We have a president who is elected uh, and is, it is a representative of the people, yeah. at least he should be, right. so that when he writes 41 executive orders in his first two weeks, of, uh, he's beginning to look more like a king, a dictator, Mr. Yeah. Biden. Uh, this yeah. is just true. Yeah. Uh, I, think, I think George Bush signed zero executive orders uh, uh, in his first like 100 days or something. Trump signed like six. Yeah. Joe Biden signed 41. You know what I mean? Just, just executive order. So we don't have a king. Amen. We don't have a king. But we do have represented officials. Uh, and, or, and the Bible says that this woman has been on so many different waters. And the kings of the earth have been with her so many different times and so many different ways. That she has influence with all of these kings. So kings represent kingdoms, don't they? Yes, sir. So uh, as goes leadership, so goes the people under leadership. Do you remember when Bill Clinton uh, committed a vile act? Uh, a sinful act, an adulterous act yeah. in the White House. Yes, sir. And he said, read my lips. I did not have intercourse with that woman. And he was lying. Yeah, right. right? Would, however he put it. Not however he put it. He right. was lying. Right. Uh, do you remember that? And in that moment in our nation, now when the highest leader in the nation begins to take such his vows of marriage so haphazardly, and when he violates his office to that degree, and all school kids are coming up underneath him and uh, it was glorified and glamorized and yeah they impeached him but the impeachment didn't go through if I remember correctly it was probably before my political time to be honest with you but what I'm saying is this as the leader goes so too goes the nation as the king goes so too goes all the people under the king and then what did our nation do now we have a generation of people that think sex before marriage is not a problem we have a generation of people, it's just a true story, yeah. that, that think nothing of fornication, that think nothing of abortion, that think nothing of sexual impurity, right. and in fact, sometimes I actually like winter better, because in winter, people actually wear clothes. Yeah. As soon as summer comes around, everybody starts taking all the clothes off, right. and it's true, you do. amen. Yes. Amen. amen. So, yeah. uh, well, we, we are living in a sexually perverse nation. As our leadership has gone sexually perverse, amen. so too, amen, so too have the people. Yeah. So watch what it says. It says, the kings, verse number two, of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth, and now here, the kings are the top leaders in government, and now the inhabitants of the earth have also been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So not only have the kings been dabbling and messing with his harlot, but also everybody, all the inhabitants, 
inhabitants of earth that are represented by the kings, they have also been dabbling in the wine that this woman gives. Yeah. This woman gives. Now, what they don't realize is that this woman is wicked. Yeah. What they don't realize is that this woman is killing them. Yeah. What they that's true. What they don't realize is that their sin comes with consequences. Yeah. What they don't realize is you cannot get drunk with the abominations of a harlot system and expect to, your life to turn out right and expect your children to turn out right. Yeah. And come on, you cannot do it. The, the, the kings of the earth can't lay down with this woman of fornication and expect there to be morality in the nation. No. When the kings lay down with her, it goes in reverberates into the society. And what happens in the society, then the people do it equal, equally as perverse things. And then what happens? You have a sexual revolution, which took place in the 1970s in this country, followed by a, a revolution in abortion, because now we got to deal with the consequences of our free love hippie brotherhood, right. nonsensical sin sexual revolution, right. and then followed by a homosexual revolution, yeah. which is now being pretty much followed, followed up by a reprobate mind. Right. Right. I mean, it's the progression of a society. Yeah. Everybody with me? Yes. Yeah. All right. Anybody have any thoughts? Oh. All right. Well, we'll keep going. Then. So the kings have been in league with her. The inhabitants of the earth have been in league with her. But I would submit to you, they don't know who exactly she is just yet. Right. Verse number six, three says, So he carried me away in the wilderness. He, excuse me. He carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman. Now I would tell you then that the woman that he sees in verse number three is the same exact woman that is referenced in verse number one. So, so it's, it's the Bible almost repeating itself so that we get a clear picture. This woman, verse number one, the great harlot. Verse number three, she is a woman. We see that we're looking at the same woman in verse number three. So he carried me away in the, into the spirit. Carried me in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. Now, that is the first moment where we realize that there's something extremely sinister behind the woman. Amen. Because this woman, then, now, now, from a Christian perspective, we realize anytime that, uh, that, that a man or a woman is laying around with half the country, that there's something evil and sinister and wicked already about that. But the world system doesn't view that as evil. They think Dr. Seuss is evil and border and abortion is okay. Yeah, right. That's how reprobate and, and mixed up the yeah. society has become. Right. Amen. So, uh, so, so, the, the, but this is the first time where even the world should be a whoosh. If they could see into the, 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 the revelation, they would say, wait a minute, this woman may be beautiful on the outside. She may be pretty to the eye. She'd have to be pretty to the eye. She'd have to be beautiful for all the kings of the earth to want to have a relationship with her. Yeah. Everybody with me? Yeah. All right, so she'd have to be. They may, this would be the first time where they, they, they'd have to almost say to themselves, but wait a minute, even though on the outside she's beautiful, uh, the truth is she's sitting on top of a beast. Right. Now what is a beast? Well, let's continue to read. Verse number three. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. So now, and now for the first time, we see this lady who's probably pretty, fairly pretty, probably dressed well, probably has all the latest Louis Vuittons and the high heels and the yeah. come on, come on and yeah. lipstick. Uh, and yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> come on, that's right. I mean, she's done what she, she looked like she going to the ball, man. I mean, she's got to, we're going to find out, man, the Bible describes right. her in this very same way. You, you're not going to live, you're not going to get that kings of the earth to be in league with you if you're not appealing to them somehow. Right. So you have this woman and what would, how would she appeal to them? She would appeal to them by virtue of her beauty. Right. But on the inside, she's wicked. And even deeper than that, yeah. she's sitting on top of a beast. Right. Amen. Yeah, he's a scarlet colored beast, a red beast. And scarlet means, I think, red. Uh, so he says, a scarlet colored beast. Uh, so this is the first time you realize that this lady is actually not operating alone. She's operating under the control of this beast. Right. Now let's see what the Bible says about the beast. 
She, the beast says, uh, the Bible says the beast, the beast is full of the names of blasphemy. So the beast said, the beast is such a beast that it's full of blasphemy and blasphemous names, blasphemous words, and blasphemes, the beast blasphemes God, it blasphemes everything that's holy, it blasphemes everything, it blasphemes everything that's pure, everything that's good, everything that's right, it blasphemes, and I'm not even saying Dr. Seuss is a, is a, is a role Bible type book, I'm just saying it's been a simple children's book since as long as I can remember. I mean, who wants to read that in hand? And yet today, <laughs> then Dr. Seuss right me next to him. I don't like it in a can. I don't like it, Sam. I am. And yet they are, they are, they are the blaspheming that which is just simple and pure. And yet the song of the year, like two years ago, was some of the most filthy, perverted language you've ever heard. And they'll shake their tail feather to that on Saturday night, uh, and then they want to get rid of Dr. Seuss on Sunday morning. Right. Something's wrong. Amen. Yeah, right. This lady is sitting on top of a beast. The kings of the earth are committing fornication with her, right. but they don't realize that there's a beast behind her. Right. Uh, the, the inhabitants of the earth are drinking, verse number two, the wine of her fornication. Yeah. So they're enjoying the pleasure of what the lady has to offer. They're getting drunk on it, and so they're so drunk on it, they're not even thinking clearly. They're not thinking with self-control. Everybody with me? Amen. Verse number four. No, let's finish reading, I guess, verse number three. The, 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 the verse number three says, uh, the, the beast was full of the names of blasphemy, having the seven heads and ten horns. Amen. So now if I have on this hand a woman who, from all intents and purposes, is probably fairly pretty. Probably. She's probably done what she can to make herself beautiful, even though she's riding on the back of a beast. This is kind of like beauty and the beast. beast. Amen. Uh, and so what is the beast doing, though? So on this hand, I have the woman, and she's pretty, and she allures a lot of people. And by the way, there's some men that are as wicked as this woman, so don't think I'm throwing women under the bus, because it takes two to tango. Amen. There's some men that grow their big muscles, and they do what they can to allure the opposite sex, and that's just as wicked as a woman doing what she can to allure the opposite sex. So all of you don't get too bent out of shape with me just yet, okay? So on this side, there's this woman, and she's doing what she can to allure everybody she can, but on this side, there's this beast. And if I could just see the fact that this woman is actually and sitting on top of this beast, I probably not want to be in league with her. No, sir. What does this beast look like? Well, the beast, uh, by the way, the beast is sometimes a, a Bible word for just simply animal sometimes. But in this case, it describes a beast, verse number three, uh, that is full of blasphemy and has seven heads. So now we're looking at a seven-headed beast. A seven-headed animal. I mean, this is one ugly, stinky, vile, weird-looking animal. And if somebody could ever look into the tavern, they'd see an ugly, stinky, vile beast. But on the outside, they see a beautiful woman that lures them in. But it lures them in slowly over time. And it calls out to them like the mermaid sirens and draws them in by her song until they sit on the bar still day after day after day, ignoring their family, ignoring their Amen. children, and winding up being a shop drunk until you find them on the side of the road in a cardboard box, begging for the chains out of your visor, or out of your visor in your door. Ladies and gentlemen, I will submit to you that this lady looks pretty on the outside, but she's a she's riding on a beast. Amen. Amen. The casino yes, sir. looks pretty on the outside. Uh -huh. In fact, it does. It looks real pretty. Uh -huh. I've never, I don't think I've ever been to a casino. I've driven by them a time or two. And one thing I've discovered is they put a whole lot of architecture yeah. into beautifying that casino. Uh -huh. And they put big, nice hotels in there and big, shiny, elaborate carpet and nice bells and whistles and sirens yeah. that go off and steak dinners and free uh, purses and no for so forth. And they allure you in uh, because it's beautiful, but on the inside, it's sitting on top of a beast yeah. that's going to steal all of your money yeah. and rob the food right off your table. Yes, sir. 
Amen. Amen. Verse number four. Now this is not, by the way, I don't think fully what this passage is intending, but what I am trying to say to you is this. This entire passage sort of typifies the way the devil tricks people. He makes it look beautiful on the outside, yeah, amen, but it's sitting on top of the beast. The beast has seven heads. I wouldn't want to go to a toward a beast that had two heads. I wouldn't want to go to toward anything that had two heads. <laughs> right? Would you? Uh, no, certainly not three, not four, not five, but seven heads. Uh, man, that's, that's a scary looking beast. And then it has not only that, but it has on top of these seven heads, it also has ten horns. So now if you could get the picture, there's this beautiful woman, and she is seated on top of this ugly beast. Everybody with me? Yeah. How do I know she's beautiful? We'll look at verse number four. And the woman was arrayed in purple. Uh, she, so she was uh, dressed in purple. She had purple on, which is, in the Bible is typically a color uh, of royalty. Uh, and scarlet, she was decked out in purple and red color. And she was decked with gold. And she had gold on, so she had jewelry on, right? That's what it says. I didn't write it. That's what it says. She had jewelry on. She had this gold on. Why did, why did she have it on? Well, to make herself more appealing. Uh, and why did she have on this gold and these precious stones? And she had on pearls, pearls, pearls. Having a golden cup. Now, it didn't say a wood cup. It didn't say a, a, a tattered cup. It didn't say a broken cup. It didn't say a, 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 a disgusting stone cup. It said it's a golden cup. In other words, when she hands you the golden cup and gives you opportunity to drink from her the wine of her fornication, it looks beautiful. She's decked in purple. And did, 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 by the way, just a side note, did you see all of the purple that was decked out at the last inauguration yeah. from, from, from the vice president. Yeah. And not only did she have on purple, yeah. but she also had on pearls that day too. It's yeah. his true story. Oh, uh, why? Because sometimes uh, on the outside, people look okay, but on the inside, they're riding on top of a system that's designed to hurt and designed to kill and designed yeah. to promote abortion and designed to promote genital mutilation. Right. And uh, can you imagine, we're having, we're pulling Dr. Seuss off the shelf right. while at the same time we're believing that a five-year-old knows enough about himself to make a decision at five years old to take puberty blockers and turn himself into a different gender. I mean, this... Yeah, come on, that's that's so it, 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 sometimes uh, the people that are writing on these systems, they're decked out in purple and pearls and they look real beautiful on the inside, but they're riding on top of a beast uh, that is designed to kill us. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. She is. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Just to take a look at the inauguration. Look how much purple was represented on the females that day. Yes, sir. I'm serious. Take yeah. a look at it. Yep. Yeah. Right. And then the lady that they used to sing the national anthem. Yes, sir. Uh, which is a, a high priestess witch, as far as I can tell. Yes, sir. She was wearing two colors that, if you combine them, make purple. Purple. Woman likes the beast. Yeah. Why does a woman ride the beast? Well, because if we, if the beast revealed itself from what it is, people would run from it. But if they could put a beautiful woman on top of it, then the beautiful woman has a pretty smile and a pretty face and pretty pearls. And, and pretty, it may y'all look like you had like like a calf at a new gate or the first time you ever stepped into a Pentecostal revival or something. Uh, with me. Uh, listen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, if they, if they stood up before the inauguration, before the election, and said, here's our plan. We want to let five-year-olds mutilate their genitalia. People would run. But if they come in dressed nicely, sitting on top of a beast that wants to destroy children. So, the beauty in the beast. Beast. The beauty in the beast. So, the lady is beautiful, presumably. Yeah. But... Uh, inside, she's full of wickedness, and she's sitting on top of a beast. Yeah. Look at verse number four. The Bible says, The woman was arrayed in 
purple and scarlet. I mean, she's decked out and she's decked out with gold and precious stones. And you look at her and you just see royalty and wealth and riches and somebody of honor. And the truth is, sometimes these people that they're putting up in front of the nation, uh, and not just this nation, but all nations, uh, even Christian people look up to these people as role models and they start to dress like them and act like them and talk like them and come on and entertain by them. Uh, and the truth is, these people are leading the nation astray. Yeah, for sure, brother. Come on. And they say, well, who do you want to look like? Jesus. Yeah. Who do you try to dress like Jesus? Amen. Yeah. Who do you try to talk like Jesus? Yeah. Amen. What do you try to model your life after? Is it Lady Gaga or Jay Z? Neither one of them. They're both oh, women riding the beast, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I'm not trying to model my life after Jay Z or Tupac or, or Tom Cruise or, or any of the rest of them. I'm trying to model my life after Jesus. Yeah. That's right, man. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So this woman is, is riding the beast, and they, they, they've got to put her up there because people would run from the beast, but right. they're not going to run from the beautiful lady. Yeah. You know what they do to sell things in this nation? They mix it with beautiful women. Yeah. They do. You know, that's true. They do. They mix it with beautiful women. Uh, you, don't, you don't see a uh, commercial on television with somebody drinking uh, drinking uh, Jack Daniels and rum in a bar. And there just is some person that's just completely given up on themselves and look like, they look like they're about half, or half uh, dead. What do they do? They put the biggest, beautiful supermodels on the television. And they say, if you want to be cool, then you got to drink this. But I have, it's been a long time since I've seen a supermodel sit down at these bars. You know what normally happens at these bars? People sit there and they sit there and they sit there until they ruin their health and they ruin their family and they ruin their income and they get possessed by the spirits that they're drinking. Yeah. Come on. Amen. Yes. Over the beauty and the beast. Amen. I wonder if some, some churches are not attracting people through the same method. That they put up that which is beautiful in an effort to lure people, but in the inside of that church, there's no gospel and there's no yeah. blood and there's no repentance yeah. and there's no self denial. And the whole time, we've got a beauty and beast situation. It looks beautiful on the outside, but on the inside, it's nothing but a beast of yeah. false religion and, and illicit lifestyles and pastors who are fornicating and yeah. laying around and stealing money. Amen. 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 Say, Brother Jason, you almost feel like preaching you're right to do yeah come on amen, amen. verse right. number five let's continue to read verse number five so so who is the woman that's the question and who is the beast well the beast i would say to you is 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 antichrist but it's even deeper than that the beast is the antichrist system that's right uh, the antichrist system now out of that antichrist system will come the antichrist himself but i think in the bible particularly in the book of revelation the antichrist system which by the way america is kind of fulfilling in a lot of ways yeah, it is, brother. i love america it's the best country in the world you'll never hey. convince me just to kneel for the flag you'll never convince me to burn the flag no i love america there's no place like this country hallelujah i thank god for it i thank god for our freedoms and our liberties that we have, at least for a short time. But I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, America has become one of the biggest portrayers of filth across the world. Amen. So how do I know it? Because out of, out of Hollywood, California, which is still a city in America, even yeah. though it's kind of like the land of the fruits and the flakes out there. <laughs> but there we are, out of Hollywood, California, they make the most filthy, vile, rented our movies. Right. And you know what happens? And it happens right here in America. And they pump it out to the entire world. Amen. They take every movie we make in America that's a blockbuster and they rewrite it under the name the languages of these other cultures and they send it into China and India and all these other places. And through America, we are oftentimes perverting the entire world. Amen. Amen. That's right. So I, I love America, but America needs to repent. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Verse number five. Let's, let's see what happens, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how we're, where we're going to go with this. I was planning on kind of going in a different direction, but let's see what happens. Verse number five. And upon her forehead, what, now this is upon the forehead of the woman, the, the name is written mystery. So there's, there's a mystery associated with this woman. Babylon the Great, 
And watch this, the mother of harlots. Yes, sir. Now in verse number one, the Bible is specific to call her a harlot, or, or as the Bible uses in verse number one, the whore. Uh, in verse number five, uh, the Bible says not only is she a harlot, but she has had offspring in the earth, and now she's the mother of harlots. Because why? When kings of the earth lay with her, guess what happens? You make babies. Yes, sir. We used to know that in this country. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we figured out a way to get rid of all the babies so we right. could just keep laying around. Right. But before yeah. we came up with this way to do this, this lady was committing fornication with the kings of the earth and she was having babies and then her babies were going into the earth. I would submit to you that whoever this woman is and whatever she stands for and whatever she represents, yeah. you can see her babies all over the place. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. You say, Brother Jason, where's one of her babies? Uh, hey, uh, the tavern? Uh, the, the tavern? Where's one of her babies at the casino? Where's one of her babies at the abortion clinic? Where's one of her babies at false religious churches? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yes, sir. That's right. Whoever this lady is, and I have my opinion, and I'm not even going there tonight, really, but I'm saying to you this, whoever this woman is that's riding on the beast, whoever the, this beauty and the beast woman is, she has babies all over the earth. Amen. Amen. She's the mother of harlots yes, and abominations of the earth. Whoever now, isn't it amazing that this woman looks beautiful? And she talks elegantly, I'm assuming. Uh, and she's probably fairly educated, and yet she's, she's the mother of abomination. She's the mother of sin. She's the mother of all that is wrong in the earth. Right. Verse number six. And I saw the woman. Now, 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 now remember in verse number two, the inhabitants of the earth, the people of the earth, they've been made wine, they've been made drunk with the wine of the woman. But not only is the not only are the inhabitants of the earth drunk and intoxicated on her wine, you know how I know the inhabitants of the earth are drunk and intoxicated with the wine of this world. You know how I know it? Because half the church folk would go to a movie tonight, but they won't come to church. Right, that's right. Amen, that kind of tells me that they've been drinking a little bit at the cup of the great harlot system. That's right. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know how I know it? Because half the Christian people won't say a word about the murder of the unborn, but you let somebody uh, club a baby seal out in the Atlantic Ocean, and they'll be ready to riot in the streets. Right. Now, we can kill our babies, and you won't say a word. Right. But we can do you club a baby seal or have a dinner shoot a giraffe, yeah. and they'll act like they're and they act like the world's falling apart. Yeah, that's right. This is a wicked, weird, mixed up, drunk society. Amen. Not only are these people who are drinking her wine, not only are they drunk, are y'all happy tonight? Yes, sir. <laughs> I Amen. am too, praise the Lord. Amen. Not only are they drunk, but she is drunk herself. Watch what she's drunk on, verse number six. Now remember this. This is apocalyptic imagery. Yes, sir. This is imagery, nevertheless. So, so it's, it's, it's an image that John is seeing in a vision, and then we are to unpack the vision and try to figure out what it means. Right. That's our job. And right. so tonight, I may not get all this right, but I'm trying. Right. And if you study it out and get something different, that's okay too. Right. But look at verse number six. Uh, and I saw the woman drunken. She's drunk. Watch what, she, what, what she's drunk with. With the blood of the saints. Amen. She gets drunk every time she hurts Christian people. Right. She gets drunk every time she harms the Christian church. I don't know if you can tell yet where all this Dr. Seuss nonsense is going, but, if they, they, but, but, but think about it. Dr. Seuss doesn't have a thing on some of what this book says that they don't like. Right. Dr. Seuss is like way down here with what, with what people don't like. You let the Bible be unleashed on this world and they, they'll do everything they can to ban it. I don't know if we can see where all this stuff's going yet, but it's all headed toward one direction, Amen. and that is to silence the Christian church. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. That's right. So oh, she's drunken. Bob, do you have some? No. She's drunken with the blood of the saints. I thought you were just praising the Lord, but I wasn't sure. Uh, she's drunken with the blood of the saints uh, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. 
She has killed the, 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 the disciples of Jesus. Whoever this woman is, she has been responsible for producing many harlots, Amen. which means she's been around for a little while. Whoever this woman is, she's riding on the back of a beast system, which is the Antichrist system. And not only that, whoever she is, she is drunk because she has killed the followers of Jesus. Now watch what John says. John says, and when I saw her. So John in this vision actually saw this lady. Now think about this for a minute. He sees a lady that is drunk. First of all, I gotta be honest with you, I really don't like drunk people. Amen. I've seen drunk people smack their wives and yes, lay out like a bunch of goofballs on the floor, yeah. bobbing and wallering and yeah. acting like a bunch of idiots. Amen. Yeah. I really don't, I listen, I don't want to be around drunk people. It's a true story. Oh. I don't, I don't like drunk, I don't like drunk people, I don't like drinking. So if I saw a lady that was drunk, maybe I'd try to preach to her a little bit. Oh, but if she if she was kind of ignoring me, didn't want to hear my, hear my preaching, I'd probably move on. Right. right. So John sees a drunk lady, but she's not just drunk, she's drunk with the blood of Christian people. Amen. She's been tipping up her glass but, but, and getting inebriated by destroying Christianity all over the world. Amen. Whoever she is. That's right. And now I really preach to her. But I certainly wouldn't try to be friends with her. Oh, Amen. So, Brother Jason, why you, uh, sometimes we make friends with the most ridiculous of people. That's yeah. right. Sure, sure. That's right. Sometimes we got Christian folk, Christian brothers and sisters in the Lord that, that would you they'd come to your house at midnight and help you if you call them. Yeah. Anybody here would, but we'll ignore them to go make friends with the soft drone. Yeah. Right. Hello, y'all yeah. just say amen on me. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I'm getting old enough that I'm going to care. Amen. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. I start to see. I start to see gray hairs and stuff. <laughs> amen. Amen. Uh, amen. Hallelujah. So uh, I don't need a uh, drunk female friends. No, I don't need drunk male friends. No, and I certainly don't need drunk friends that don't know if they're male or female. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I don't need friends like that. Right. So John sees her. And watch what happens. He said, when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Now that is a wild statement, folks. Yes, you know what means to, you know what admiration means? It means to admire yeah. her. Admiration. He said, but I saw this drunk woman sitting on the back of a beast, drunk with the martyrs, uh, drunk with the blood of the martyrs. I admire her. That is probably the most weird statement in the book. I admire her. But I'm saying this to you, it's weird in the sense that we read it and we say, that's odd, John. But it's not weird in the sense that we've all been admiring her for some time. Right. Hello, hello. Hey, so, I don't know, I don't know if that's true. Yeah, you, you, we admire her when we watch her movies. Right. Come on. Right. We admire her when we stay home instead of go to church. Right. Come on. We, we admire her when, when the world that she is creating and all the harlot babies she is producing have more pull on us than the altar. We've all been admiring her for some time. Nice. Amen. So John says, I saw her and she was so, that's why I say she had to be beautiful because she was so mesmerizing to him. That even though she was drunk, she was so decked out with gold and pearls and fine clothes. And she looked so wonderful that he admired her. Have you ever admired something that you knew was killing you? Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. So well, let me give you an example. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Brother Jason admires donuts. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. I, I admire them. I like them. Uh, amen. I mean, you know what the truth is? I, I'd be better off with green beans. Amen. But, I, but I'm kind of drawn to that which is killing me. And there's a lot of Christian folks that have been drawn a long time to that which is killing them. It's a harm. It's something that's designed to harm them. But they don't see it. And the more you preach about it, the more they ignore it anyway. Right. That's right. Sometimes we're all drawn to stuff right. that's killing us. Yes, sir. Verse number seven, verse number six, John was drawn to her. 
He wondered at her with great admiration. Verse number seven. You know what they said? They said the they said the, uh, that, that oh boy, I'm running out of time. They said that the, the, back in Greek mythology that there was this the, the, there was this uh, figure that would appear out into in the sea uh, in Greek mythology. This is a mythological talk, talk, but there was a big genre of uh, things in, in in history, and there were these characters. They said in Greek mythology that would appear out in the sea and would start singing to these sailors. They used to call them sirens. Today, we call them mermaids. Right. Yeah. And they said in Greek mythology that these sirens would sing so beautifully that they would take all these men who had been out on the sea for a long time and they would begin to sing to them so beautifully. And by the way, men who have been without women out on the sea for a long time. And then this weird mythical creature who has a beautiful voice in the face of a woman. We all entertained on the story when we watched The Little Mermaid. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> right. You remember what Ariel did? Yeah. I want to be where the people are. Yeah. What she do? She sang. And what did the singing do? It allured the men. And what the, what, the, what, the, what the sirens in Greek mythology would do was sing so much that they would lure the men, but they, they would actually lure them toward the rocks. And the whole time these men are engaged so much in her song and engaged so much by her beauty that they don't even see that she's leading them to the rocks. Could this be the American church sometimes? Sister Naomi, did you have some? Do you think this thing or woman or whatever it is, does she have an alluring spirit? Or is it just, she's just so evil that uh, people just looked on I think she had, and she had and has, because I think she's still around, yes, an alluring right. spirit. That's what I think. Yes, I mean, right. she, 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 she's riding on the back of an ugly beast, and yet, Satan puts her there because she lures people away from the ugliness of the beast and toward her beauty. And she just draws them and, uh, to them. Uh, and they almost get mesmerized by it, just like the sirens who sing, I want to be where the people are. Right. You all remember that song? Yes, right. Why do it such a bad rendition that you all don't remember? <laughs> Walking around up there on those streets <laughs> of where they walk. Y'all remember that? Now stop it. Y'all know you watch a little mermaid. Amen. So, uh, nevertheless, uh, so what am I saying? Well, I'm saying these mermaids would allure the seas, I mean, according to Greek mythology. What is happening? By the way, this lady's identity is revealed in this chapter. But watch what happens in verse number 7. Well, at least partly. Verse number 7 in the Bible says, And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? Now watch what the angel has to do to John. The angel actually has to rebuke John. Right. John, why are you marveling at this lady who's drunk with Peter's blood? Right. Why are you marveling at this lady who's drunk with the blood of the saints? And why are you marveling at somebody who's producing such wickedness in the, in the earth, the beauty right. and the beast? Ladies and gentlemen, let me just tell you this. There are political platforms in this country that are nothing but Beasts. Yes, sir. Yes. Beasts. Yes. But they don't let the beast run the show. They let the woman yeah. ride on top That's right. of the beast. That's right. They, they don't let the beast come out and hold a press conference and say, here's our goal. We want to mix up every school kid so bad that they don't know if they're a boy or a girl. They don't let the beast come up and say, here's what we want to do. We want to shut down churches while leaving abortion clinics open and they've been doing that for the last year they don't let the beast run the press conference and say here's what we want to do we want to shut down every church while letting uh, the liquor store stay open somehow you're not going to catch COVID in the liquor store but you're going to catch it in the church place you're hard. right yeah that's right yeah they don't let the beast run the show right. they make sure that there's a woman riding on top of the beast it's a beauty and the beast type yeah, situation yeah. boy oh boy I kind of want to keep going but I'm kind of out of time too yeah. amen let's look at verse number 8 and then we'll, then we'll, we'll at least look at verse number 8 ok verse number 7 I guess it is and the angel said unto me wherefore didst thou marvel so the angel kind of gets it appears kind of the angel gets kind of upset at John right. like why are, you, why are you marveling at such a creature 
He right. says, I will tell thee the mystery of the woman. This woman, there's a mystery behind her. And then of the beast, and there's a mystery behind the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. So the beast has the seven heads and ten horns. The woman has the beautiful robes on, the beautiful scarlet on. John said, the angel says, I'm going to tell you the mystery of the woman and the mystery of the beast uh, as well. So there's going to be this beast antichrist, and then there's going to be antichrist system, a governmental antichrist system, then there's going to be this woman riding on top of it who is going to lead the world into the antichrist system. Look at yeah. verse number 8 with me. The beast that thou sawest was. Now that's past tense. The beast was. So who's the beast? Well, the beast was. He used to be. He and is not. So the beast was. Past tense. Is not. Present tense, but watch what it has says, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. In other words, the beast is going to come out of hell. That's right. The beast is going to be birthed out of hell. The Antichrist system was created in hell. Yeah. Why? Because Christ is the king of the world. And now the devil, who, who, whose final home is the lake of fire, he has, he has a competing system that's designed to be anti-Christ in the place of Christ. And the system is not going to come out and say that it is a beast. It's going to put a woman on top of the beast. Right. A woman, a pretty lady. Amen. A bottomless pit. Watch what happens. comes out of the bottomless pit and it goes into perdition. Now, I, by the way, I would never pretend that I understand all of these verses. I don't. Right. All I'm trying to do is know that this is a part of the Bible. We have an obligation to teach it, and I'm trying to teach it the best I can. Right. But I will admit to you, I am no uh, eschatology scholar. I, I am not. But I do the best I can. Verse number 8. The beast which thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. So the beast is going to come out of hell. It's going to go into perdition in the end, into destruction. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Now that's awful. Yes, sir. The beast was and is not and watch what John says and the angel says the end, and yet is. Right. So there was a portion of this beast that was maybe, maybe this beast goes all the way back to Egypt when, it, when Egypt, uh, as a part of this beast system, it is standing in the way of God's people and is making slaves out of them to destroy them. Uh, and, and when and the, the, the head, the king of this beast, his heart gets hardened as he stands as an anti-Christ in the way of God, in between God and his people, and God has to destroy him. Maybe the beast goes all the way back to there. Maybe it was... Past tense, and maybe the beast carried on from Babylon, from, excuse me, from 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 from, uh, from Egypt to Babylon, and from Babylon to Assyria, and from Assyria to Medo-Persia, and from Medo-Persia to Greece, and from Greece to Rome, and from Rome to uh, all over the world, the waters of the world. That's it. The waters of the world. Amen. So the beast was, and is not, and yet is. So if the beast originally was, was typified by Egypt, well, Egypt in that sense is not anymore, so it was and is not, but yet it is because this beast is so old, and the woman who sits on top of the beast, which is, uh, in my opinion, is false religion, uh, but specifically yeah, false religion typified by, uh, by, by Rome. Amen. Yes, sir. One billion people tonight claim the title of Roman Catholic, Amen. and yet there is no salvation in Roman Catholicism. Yes, Amen. It's, it's, it's pretty on the outside. And all of its leaders, what do they do? They array themselves in gold and purple. And, uh, I don't know. Maybe this beast.
Babies came from Egypt and traveled on down through the systems of government of the world and the kings were committing fornication with her and this false religion that came from Babylon at the Tower of Babel and all of these things traveled down through the world and maybe, yeah. maybe that beast system is here today. Yes, sir. Right. Maybe right. that beast system, the leader of that beast system is going around the world uh, preaching that we all serve the same God right. and they call him the Pope and he sits at the... Amen. Yeah. Come, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Preach it. I don't know. Yeah. But I kind of do know. Yeah. But I kind of don't know. Yes, I don't know exactly how it all, it's all, all shapes out. But I know that I've got a theory. And maybe next week we'll finish up the theory. <laughs> Beauty and the beast. Hallelujah. Beauty Amen. and the beast. You're never going to be able to trick people by showing them the true character of the beast. That's right. So what must you do? You must put a beautiful woman out in front. And while the beautiful woman takes the strut and sand and everybody's admiring her beauty and enjoying what she has to offer, then the beast comes in and devours. You think maybe there's a section, uh, there's a little bit of this beauty and beast story in America? Yeah. For sure, brother. Do you remember when Jehu came to, uh, I'm, 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 I'm going to stop eventually. Do you remember when Jehu came to wreak uh, judgment on Jezebel? Do you remember what Jezebel did? Read it when you get home. The Bible said when Jezebel uh, knew that Jehu was coming to bring judgment upon her, that she tired her hair. She did her hair. and she, The Bible said she painted her face. She made this, what the scripture said. I didn't write the book. She, she, she made herself look as beautiful as possible. You know why? Because she was going to try to allure Jehu away from judgment. Right. But I'm telling you, no matter how beautiful we make ourselves, we'll never lure the judgment of God away from us unless we right. repent and believe the gospel of His dear Son. Hallelujah. Beauty and the beast. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Y'all happy? Amen. 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 All right. Praise Amen. the Lord. Woo. All right. Well, let's be dismissed in prayer. I hope y'all enjoyed this. Oh, oh, maybe next week we'll finish Revelation 17. What do you think? And maybe we even go on into Revelation 18. That has a lot to say about Mystery Babylon as well. Yeah.